Dai Ramirez is the greatest pianist from Cuba. The senior. We put together today. For everyone that's watching this, Darima and I we met through Sima Funk. And since that time, we wanted to do something together. You were playing in Central Park. I wanted to come, and just, it just didn't work out. And then coronavirus came up. Okay, so D Darren, tell everybody about your background, who you are, what you do. You know, you're just like this Afro-Cuban jazz master. Well, um, I grew up in Havana, 1983. In the 80s, the 80s of Cuba, was I got the very last period of the Soviet Union, bringing a lot of a lot of stuff to Cuba, you know, from apples <laughs> to a lot, of, a lot of different things. And then all of a sudden, 1990s, you know, uh, Cuba went through a lot of uh, difficulties uh, economic-wise. But at the same time, Cuba always support uh, everyone in terms of education. So in somehow that has been one of the biggest blessings of being Cuban is that uh, in one hand, if you look at uh, you know the 18th, 19th century when the slave when the Spanish uh, slave owner were in Cuba, one of the biggest blessings is that we were allowed to keep our tambores. Okay. In the other hand, you know when when I started you know growing up, I was able to keep my tambores, but at the same time learn the classical piano, the piano classical of Bach, Beethoven, Mozart. So imagine having one hand the, the African tambores and then here the European classical uh, influences that makes you know make you a very uh, unique individual in, in a sense because you are growing up with a lot of different taste and musical taste really available to you so also uh, in the other hands three, three hands in the other hands my family is also a musician you know coming from a musician a musician family my dad always uh, exposed me to perform in front of the audience that was a big a, a nice blessing because you know it was always very outgoing uh, and uh, but at the same time consciously my dad prepared every Sunday bringing a lot of his friends to the living room. So I used to prepare the song that I was going to do for the exam, you know, the little pieces. So those little pieces- how, even, how old were you? How old seven, were you then? Seven years old. Seven. Seven years old. Yeah. So imagine with seven that uh, it, 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 for me it was a fun thing just to know that every week I had to prepare Monday to Saturday because on Sunday my my dad used to bring his friend preparing a big meal and me playing for them having a, my tuxedo hitting in the kitchen coming and then for all of you Dynamite Gonzalez ah so so but you know still you know these type of things at the end of the day you know with the time it pays off because you know we musicians we we mainly perform for the audience and um you know this is one of the things that we all have to be able to to you know to keep grounded and being able to demonstrate what we have been practicing you know so yes grew up with musicians all around me I uh, grew up going to my dad's uh, rehearsals and performance, seeing the piano player playing the Knife Montuno. And then, how do you do that? What type of inversion do you do? You play, and the guy said, okay, I play unison, I play your know, root against the third, and uh, then you can do this. But I think if you put the octave, the, the tumbao sound sound like a stronger. So I started like digging with that. So it was a big blessing to, to experience music in first hand. And then so in addition to like your family and just learning, you were actually in like a, a music school in Havana, right? Yes, I, okay. I, I with, with, seven, with seven years old, uh, um, you know, I enrolled in the elementary school of music. Then I spent seven years there. It was amazing mostly because you, Cuba, what I do is that, what they do is that they select the best 20 a kid for violin, cello, trumpet, piano. So you are in a, in a room with the talk of my of, of your friend of your generation. Everybody speaking the same language. So it's very exciting to you know to absorb the energy from from each other. And um, and then I went to the National School of Art, which is the 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 high school of music in Havana, where I discovered jazz uh, consciously. And then when did you, you came to the States when? 
Oh, I came to the state in 2010. 2010, you know, after having a, a, a very active career in Havana, performing with Climax, with Havana de Primera, uh, recording my first album, Dynamite Havana in Trance, uh, you know, winning two times the, the jazz uh, contest in Havana that is called Joyas. You know, a lot of things going on until 2010. It, actually, in 20, 2009, I went to Spain and I did a big tour with, with Chucho Valdez, Diego El Cigala, and Bebo Valdez. After this performance in Spain, this organization, SGAE, S -G -A -E, which is similar to ASCAP and BMI, they decided to award $1 million to support seven presidential scholarships to Berkeley College of Music. So I auditioned along with 3,000 more applicants, and guess what? I was the first Cuban accepted. I was the only Cuban accepted. It was like an amazing opportunity. You know, it, it changed my life in many ways. And then through New York 2013, I, I moved to New York like many of my Berkeley friends. I wanted to experience for hands the, the city that never sleep. And uh, you know, it was it was it had been a very I would say successful story in my for, for myself. For myself it means like when I say successful is when when you decide to do something and you achieve what you wanna do, right? So what I wanted yeah. to do is to be able to be in New York and at least to find my own space to be a, a unique voice, my own voice among so many talented people. Let's let's do it. I would love to, I would love to. Uh, See, we can, we can, we, I, I can play a one, one, one a piece for, for, for you and for the audience. So can you see where yeah. the piano here? Pretty good? Okay. Perfect, yeah.
one day we'll actually get together and we will see each other and I'll bring the camera and we'll do it in person. All right? Sounds good. Sounds good. Muchas gracias. Either in... Oh, no. It's, it's mi placer. In, it's in, in, in Havana or New York, somewhere we'll do it. All right? And it's, it's uh, totally my pleasure. And I really appreciate the time. And, um, and I, th I think everyone will love hearing this because I, I, it's awesome. I'm so thankful that, I, that I also you invited me. Finally, you know, we are able to do something together. But I just want to send a message to everyone that we need to continue embracing love, that we need to be able to continue being united and um, go to Havana and experience it firsthand, okay? Most love, everybody, yeah. we work for you. We have a big hug and we say, welcome to Havana. Welcome to Havana. <laughs>